When you see arrays with a small pocket pair and are looking to set mine, the very first thing that you should be looking at is the razor's stack size, determining what odds you would be getting on your set mine. Let's hear what a few professionals have to say about what odds you should be getting if you play this set or jet type of strategy. As a general principle, when somebody makes a, a big raise and you have a pair, a small pair, you want to have at least 10 times the size of the raise. Set mine, basically, if I'm only playing to flop a set and I'm going to fold if I don't flop a set, I'm looking for like the amount of money I have to call to their stack ratio to be at least to like 10 to 1. If they don't have at least at least about 15 to 1, then you shouldn't even be thinking about it. I suggest using the 25x rule, meaning that we can win at least 25 times the open raise when we do flop a set, to ensure that the set mines I take are more ideal and factors in the times when I don't flop sets or flop sets and get zero action. You heard a pretty wide range there, from 10 to 1 all the way up to 25 to 1. I'm going to show you how I get my magic number for set mining, which highly depends on what range of hands the villain or villains have. To calculate my number, I have to first define what set mining is, which to me is basically playing like a robot. Folding if you don't hit a set, and raising to get it all in if you do hit a set. The playability of when you don't flop a set, bluffing a better hand out of the pot, or profitably calling with your pair being the best hand, will not be factored in, because that wouldn't be just set mining. Some flops where you don't flop a set, you can also flop a whole lot of equity against any other holding, but those won't be factored in either since they don't fit my definition of set mining. My magic number will be the baseline of the required odds to purely set mine, essentially never outplaying your opponent. This makes it so it will be applicable to a beginning poker player that is not very confident in their post-flop abilities. When you are set mining, you actually want your opponent to have aces, since you want villain to stack off whenever they hit top pair or better, which aces does every single flop. So let's calculate what odds we need to set mine in this dream case scenario. Villain has pocket rockets and will always stack off. If we hit our set, all the money's getting in. If we don't, we fold and lose just the bet we called preflop. First, we calculate the probability we miss our set. There are 48 cards left in the deck if we have pocket sixes and villain has pocket aces. 46 of them are not sixes, so the probability that no six comes equals 87.77%. Then we hit our set 100% minus that, which is 12.23%. Hitting a set in general happens 11.76% of the time. But in this specific scenario, the two aces villain has are discounted. Now for our expected value. It will be the probability we hit a set or better, multiplied by the effective stack we will win. Plus the times we hit our set and only win the pot, and not our opponent's full stack. For aces, we're assuming this is zero. Minus the times we hit our set and lose our entire stack. Yes, this does happen sometimes. Then lastly, subtract when we miss our set times the bet we called preflop. We have to calculate our equity against pocket aces when we hit our set, which we can see comes out to be 82.08%. So we are going to input that number into our expected value equation. To find our break-even pure set mining odds, we set the expected value to be zero, then group the number of bets we would win in an all-in scenario, as well as the times we just lose our single bet. Solving for the ratio of the number of bets we would need in an opponent's stack to make the investment preflop worth the call, we would need about 11 to 1 odds to set mine when the opponent has pocket kings, now assuming that villain will not stack off if we hit our set and an ace also comes on the flop. If the flop does have an ace, we will only get one bet out of the villain. We see here that we get an estimate of 13 to 1 odds needed to profitably purely set mine. I'm not going to bore you with any more calculations, but I did the same thing for pairs down to pocket nines. As you can see from the table, the lower hand the villain has, the worse odds we are getting on a set mine, since it's much less likely that he flops an overpair. For ace king and ace queen, 
I assumed villain would stack off if he hit top pair or better, or also had any type of flush or straight draw. So very loosely stack off. Remember, about two-thirds of the time, though, ace-king completely misses, and we won't fully cash in when we hit our set, and might only get one continuation bet out of our opponent. On the very right column of the table, we can see that when we give Villain a super tight range of jacks plus ace-king, we need an estimated 17 to 1 odds to profitably purely set mine. Going down to 9s plus ace-queen plus, we see that we're needing 21 to 1 odds. This is how I get my magic number of needing about 20 to 1, closer to the higher number given by the pros earlier. The main takeaway from all that, I would say, is remembering the approximate 11 to 1 odds you would need if you put Villain on aces and he would never fold. So that is the absolute minimum. Then that magic 20 to 1 number that you would need on a range of 9s plus ace-queen plus. As a summary of set mining and playing small pocket pairs in general, the main factors that would make playing those small pocket pairs more profitable would be 1 and 2, how deep you are, and villain's range, of course. Number 3, villain's aggressiveness. If villain likes to bluff when he misses and doesn't like giving up on pots, that will make it more enticing to set mine against him. If villain plays passively for pot control and never bluffs, then that will be a lot less enticing. Number four is position. It's always easier to ensure bets on each street when you're in position. My last main factor is number five, multi-way flops. Small pocket pairs are perfect for multi-way flops because you would be getting better odds with more money in the pot from the callers and also more players that can potentially hit a second best hand like top pair willing to pay you off when you do hit your set. When you're at the poker table, just remember this. So when you get dealt a pocket pair, your opponent's deep and you're deep. Play it smooth, flop a set, and win all the money.